Air Products Commercial Manager Nick Mitica says that the more people can get in and drive the technology and have their questions answered about safety, they tend to become more excited about hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Part of it's an education. Many people don't know what it is. So if the only time they've ever heard of the word hydrogen was related to the Hindenburg, of course, they don't have a favorable impression of it. But once people see these cars, drive these cars, learn more about it, it, it it's amazing that I, you know, the, the light bulb goes on. And I do a lot of community outreach. Air products in, um, in our corporate headquarters, we actually have a hydrogen fueling station. And we operate two hydrogen shuttle buses from there. And we operate actually now a uh, Chevy Equinox from, from General Motors. And we take that car out into the community and we do a lot of our own education and outreach. And it's great to see when you explain these technologies in very practical terms. You let people touch them, get in the cars, drive them. Uh, then they un start to, to understand and accept it. And, and in, in almost inevitably you get how many people raising their hands saying, when can I get this? When can I get this? Why aren't we doing this now? It just makes so much sense. So I would say that, you know, it's still mixed, you know, around the country. Um, but a lot of that has to do with where, where is the education occurred? So generally, the more knowledgeable people are of these technologies, the more they can get in them, drive them, um, see and feel for it themselves, understand the safety that's been designed into these vehicles, understand the safety that's been designed into the fueling infrastructure. Then, like you know, then I think it becomes a, a real practical technology that people can relate to, and it's not just a science experiment anymore. But you know that education process takes time. It's just like anything. So, and that's what we're like California Fuel Cell Partnership. Yeah, uh, and there's a couple of other state organizations here at this time. So you're it's a, so some states are becoming more committed to this with the public. Yeah, cl clearly there's a number of states that I would say that are in the lead in terms of in their own investments into hydrogen and trying to push the hydrogen. Um, Which ones are those programs? So certainly California is in the lead. Um, Somewhere between uh, 20 and uh, Ohio is very supportive. South Carolina is extremely supportive. Um, Florida is very supportive and has incentives. Um, so there's a number of, of states that um, where these technologies are kind of get, getting deployed. And they, it, it somewhat depends on whether you're talking about cars or power generation. But there's a number of states that are trying to develop um, centers for hydrogen investment and fuel cell investment because they recognize that these are new technologies, they can create high-tech jobs, and they want to have you know people come to them and do this development here, do initial deployments there and kind of develop their their infrastructure to support this, you know, these emerging technologies. Um, when you look at where it's where the cars will get deployed, it's it's California, it's New York and DC. That there will be cars deployed in a variety of maybe of other places, but we need we do need to have density in order to learn what we need to learn for the next stage and to get that scale. And just think of the for a, for an automotive manufacturer, if a standard internal combustion engine car, they just change something, they put regenerative braking on a car or something like that. Imagine what they have to do to train all their dealers, maintenance shops, I don't know, trade organizations on how to fix this stuff, right? Just something as simple as that. So now you introduce a brand new drivetrain, a brand new technology. That's just another piece of the puzzle that will have to get deployed by the OEMs. So it just you don't it doesn't do us any good to have one car in every state with one fueling station, right? We need to get density so the training can be done, the infrastructure can be built to support it, and then we'll grow out from there.